13 years. It has been 13 years since Scott Pilgrim vs. the World was released in theaters, and since then it has become one of the biggest cult classic movies among the modern generation. Since then, the entire Scott Pilgrim IP has been all but abandoned despite its overwhelmingly positive legacy and diehard fanbase. Well now, after what feels like a lifetime of waiting, Netflix created the thing every single Scott Pilgrim fan has wanted for a decade. An animated series written by Brian Lee O'Malley in a similar art style to the comics, with every single cast member from the movie reprising their roles. And the soundtrack that is created by Anna Managuchi, who created the soundtrack for the Scott Pilgrim video game. It was more than the Scott Pilgrim fanbase could have ever have dreamt of. It was perfect. There was literally no way this series could disappoint. It is a Scott Pilgrim fan dream come true. There's only one problem. Scott Pilgrim Takes Off isn't about Scott Pilgrim. So what do I mean by this? Well, let me give you a rundown of what happens in this series. If you want to just get to the review, there should be a time displayed on screen for you to skip to. Scott Pilgrim is a 23-year-old who one night at a party meets a girl named Ramona Flowers who he has kept seeing in his dreams. He asks her out on a date and it goes, uh, pretty well. He then invites Ramona to watch him perform in his band and while they are playing is challenged to a fight by Ramona's evil ex-boyfriend, Matthew Patel. It turns out that in order for Scott to date Ramona, he has to defeat her several evil exes in combat. The fight begins and Matthew almost immediately kills Scott. Matthew celebrates and tries to claim Ramona for himself, but Ramona is not at all interested and leaves. Matthew is furious and returns to the Evil X headquarters and confronts the creator of the League, Gideon Graves, as to why Ramona refused to date him after he won. Turns out that that wasn't a part of the rules and that if any of the exes defeated Scott, it's Gideon who gets the right to date her. Matthew refuses to accept this and challenges Gideon to a duel for everything Gideon owns and wins. This leaves Matthew as the CEO of Gideon's company, the League of Evil Exes disbands, and Gideon with not a cent to his name. Meanwhile, after some investigation work, Ramona finds out that Scott didn't really die and fell through a portal in the middle of his fight against Matthew Patel. Ramona then spends most of the series interviewing suspects behind Scott's kidnapping while giving closure to the Evil Exes along the way. Near the end of the series, we switch back to Scott's perspective, and his kidnapper was none other than the original Scott Pilgrim from the comics or movie, now living 14 years in the future. Future Scott kidnapped current Scott so that he would never date Ramona because in the future, after the two got married, Ramona broke his heart. Throughout the series, a robot built by twins that Ramona dated has been keeping an eye on Ramona, and our Scott in the future looks through the future version of that robot's memories to see what Ramona did after he disappeared, and sees how hard Ramona had worked to try to find him, which revitalizes his trust in Ramona. He finds the future Ramona and shows her how determined his Ramona was to find him, which convinces her to take him back to his timeline. Our Scott and Ramona are finally reunited, but when they try to kiss they are blocked by a force field of some kind. They are convinced one of the evil exes must be behind this and meet up with them who are all attending a play hosted by Matthew Patel, but none of them confess to being the culprit. During the play, an even older version of the Scott that kidnapped our Scott teleports the entire cast onto a moon. He confesses that he spiked Scott's drink with the nanomachines while they were in the future together in a last ditch effort to make sure Scott and Ramona never get together, but in the future, they love each other so much that it doesn't make a difference. The entire cast fights older Scott, but are unable to defeat him and all hope seems lost until older Ramona interrupts the battle. Older Ramona and our Ramona merge together to create Super Ramona who sends older Scott back to his timeline and destroys the nanomachines allowing Ramona and Scott to kiss again. Matthew Patel gives back Gideon's company to him no longer wanting to deal with the stress. Most of the exes go on to live their best lives, and the series ends with Ramona and Scott happily dating with a mid credit scene of Gideon plotting something evil that may set up for a second season. So if by some absurd chance you have never read the comic or seen the movie, this show is essentially the equivalent to Marvel's What If, but in the Scott Pilgrim universe. Every single event that happens in the comics and movie doesn't happen due to Scott losing to Matthew Patel, and since Scott isn't around throughout most of the series, the show primarily focuses on Ramona and her seven evil exes. Now, although Scott Pilgrim is barely a character in his own series, he does have an arc near the end of the show where he's confronted with facing the embodiment of his most negative traits, of his personality, and becomes more self-aware of them, making him a better person. 
This is good character development, but since he is only in three of the eight episodes, it's pretty hard to care about this arc since he's not in the show enough to show that he even has these character flaws to begin with. And it's hard to care about him as a character, especially if you have never watched any of the previous Scott Pilgrim iterations. The true main character of this show is Ramona Flowers, and she's... Uh, eh. She's not bad, and this version is a lot more loving towards Scott in comparison to her other versions, which is an improvement to her character, but as a standalone character, she's really not that interesting. I still like her, and she does have an arc where she confronts and gives closure to her past mistakes, but just like her previous versions, she's defined by her relationships with other characters, and isn't that captivating on her own, which I think the series understood because despite Ramona taking the role of the main character in this show, the supporting cast are just about as important as she is. There are simply too many characters in this show for me to go to great detail with, but the characters who do get developed the most and play their parts well in this series are Matthew Battelle, who is a hot-headed overdramatic moron, Lucas Lee, who is an apathetic moron who is always trying a bit too hard to be cool, and it's absolutely endearing. Gideon, who is the evil mastermind turned geeky loser who is arguably the most relatable character in the show when he's just being a complete dork. Julie, who is the foul-mouthed hothead who will probably be the cause of the biggest laughs out of you while you're watching the series. Young Neil, who is just lovably naive and stupid. Wallace, who steals the spotlight of every single scene he's in with his nonchalant wit and Roxanne, who despite not playing a huge role in the series, is the best written character in the series hands down, with her multifaceted personality and heartbreaking backstory. The rest of the cast, well, aren't really needed. Kim really has two big moments in the entire show, one for her backstory and one for fan service. Steven Stills only exists to date Knives, so that Knives can be occupied with something throughout the story since Knives was always defined by Scott, and even though this situation would have been the perfect chance to develop her and explore who she is outside of her relationship with Scott, she just makes Steven into her new Scott replacement. The twins are only in the show to create a MacGuffin, Stacy is just as unimportant as she's always been, Envy is barely in the show at all and gets no development whatsoever, and Todd is just reduced into an object to be used by Wallace for a running gag. All these characters could have been written out of the series and the show would have been fine if not better because that would have just meant more screen time for the more interesting half of the cast. As for the show itself, it's a chaotic mess. The way I see it, it's almost four different shows in one. The first episode is a retelling of the original story, only for the second episode to become a what if series, then for the show to become a comedic whodunit mystery from episodes 3 through 6, and the last two episodes make it into a show about multiverses. With so many narrative shifts, I was exhausted by the end of the series and even though it's due to its chaotic nature that it stands out so much and is probably the most unique animated series of the year, it is exhaustingly unfocused and hard to digest and with so many narrative shifts the new narrative can sometimes make the previous one feel kind of pointless and like it was just filler. This is most evident when the show becomes a whodunit about finding out what happened to Scott only for once they finally put the pieces together and the mystery is solved with no help from them, Scott comes back into the show, making all their efforts through the last three episodes of the show feel absolutely pointless. It's true that if Ramona never had conducted this investigation, Scott would have never been motivated to come back from the future, but it being done this way just feels so unrewarding. If instead of Scott and future Ramona being convinced to return Scott to the past because of events that have already happened in the show, if instead the primary cast had realized that something horrible had happened between future Scott and Ramona and figured out what that was so that Ramona and Scott never divorced, that would have been a great method of fixing their character flaws so that Scott and Ramona could have both become better people and the future versions of themselves would have never split apart. This would have been at the sacrifice of the grand battle between older Scott and the cast, but I'm just going to say what everyone who watching this was thinking. The older Scott plotline sucks. It is cool that we get a peek into what happened to the original characters the fans grew up with, but the older Scott plot twist felt so out of place and like it was merely put there for shock value, with so little thought put into it that older Scott's character and story feels blatantly incomplete. Sure, it was a great method of forcing Scott to self-reflect on who he is as a person, but there's never mention of why old Scott is the way he is. 
Yes, it's stated by him that Ramona broke his heart and that Ramona says that they were having a rough patch, but it's never actually stated why. Why did they separate? What was the reasoning for the rough patch? What did Ramona say to Scott that hurt him so much? What is the context for the entire situation that acts as the catalyst for the series whole premise? One would think this would be a very important aspect of the show to explore and that realistically at least someone would have asked what happened between future Scott and Ramona. But no, it's completely glossed over and makes this conflict between future Scott and Ramona feel artificial and unimportant. And believe me, having the big plot twist and event that set the entire show in motion feeling unimportant is really, really bad. This isn't some profound issue I'm pointing out, this is basic story writing 101. What makes this poorly written outcome even more annoying is that earlier in the show, this show had some really deep writing going for it that took me aback by how mature and wholesome I thought it was trying to be. A large portion of the show focuses on Ramona giving closure to her exes, which is something that has always bothered me about the Scott Pilgrim IP. For those who don't know, Scott Pilgrim and Ramona Flowers are intentionally written to be bad people, and throughout the series they go from bad to imperfect, but with some work and self-reflection they might even become decent people. One of the reasons for this is that Ramona broke all of her ex's hearts in uncompassionate ways which turned them evil. So in episode 3 when Ramona laments how sorry and wrong she was for how she treated Roxanne, I was so happy because my biggest grief with the Scott Pilgrim series was finally being addressed, and then it was done again for Lucas Lee in episode 4. In a show about psychic vegans, ninja paparazzi, and demon hipster chicks, this is some of the most emotionally mature writing I have seen in a show in a long time. Ramona admitting she was wrong and patching up the wound she left on these characters so they can have closure and move on with their life is the perfect exploration of how real life villains are made. There are no evil people in real life, only those who are hurt and never healed. As the saying goes, those who are heartless once cared too much. These two episodes took that saying and portrayed it perfectly. Lucas Lee has the only board he broke and injured himself on framed because it reminds him of the day Ramona patched his wounds, which made him feel wanted, but now only serves as a reminder of the person he cared about cheating on him. Throughout the battle between Roxy and Ramona, you can see Roxy tearing up and there's more pain in her eyes than rage. These two episodes' exploration of Ramona's wrongdoings are exemplary in how to explore emotional trauma. But that's the worst part. It's only these two episodes. Ramona has one interaction with Matthew Patel, Todd is turned into a joke, I don't think she even interacts with the twins once throughout the series, and Gideon, her most traumatic breakup, she too has a single interaction with. This show had something unbelievably good going for it, with Ramona solving her past relationships only for it to throw it away to turn the show into a comedy mystery and then cash in on the popularity of multiverses. The doubt I had in the show once it deterred from being a retelling of the comics was vanquished when it became a show about correcting the mistakes of the past, only for the show to become a vapid, unfocused, tonally whiplashed adventure that feels like it's trying too hard to be a Marvel movie. Now don't get me wrong, there are still some good moments sprinkled in the second half of the show. Scott and Ramona's love for each other being so strong that it's implied that they still end up together, even if they can't kiss, was the perfect way to summarize just how much these two are dedicated to each other. There's actually a sort of chill, wholesome feeling to the show when it's not complete and utter chaos that reminds me of a coming of age slice of life, which at times was serene and was much needed contrast to the overload of energy this show can emit when it wants to. This is also accompanied by a style of comedy that can at times be cartoony or dry and witty, just like the movie. I would actually go so far as to say the comedy is on par with the movie, if not a little less. So when you mix some genuinely good comedy with this feel-good ambience of wholesomeness and slice of life, it combines into such a joyous show that will just make you feel good. But don't let that make you think I don't enjoy when this show is high energy. When this show wants to get the adrenaline going, it's pretty good at it. With using creative camera angles, unique set pieces, vibrant colors, and a stylized art style to rival Studio Trigger. The sheer amount of absurdity and creativity that made millions of people love Scott Pilgrim is embodied very well in the action scenes. When there is one. You see, when I say there are only three real fights in the entirety of the show, I mean it. 
there's the absolutely amazing Ramona vs. Roxanne fight that creatively changes the environment they are in by transporting to different movie set pieces, which is not only pure eye candy, but also is really, really fun when the duo interact with the environment during the fight. There's the fight between Matthew Patel and Gideon, which was pretty cool with how much environmental changes they go through, and how the viewer is guaranteed to be on the edge of their seat due to there being no way to assume who's going to be victorious, especially since there are multiple times in the fight where each fighter has the upper hand so neither feels like a complete underdog. And then we got the final fight against Future Scott, which is just the typical lazy formula where the entire cast fights against this undefeatable enemy, gets to throw in one or two of their staple attacks which barely affects him to show how powerful he is, and then defeats almost everybody with little to no difficulty only for him to finally be defeated by a deus ex machina. Those are the three main fights in the entire series. There are some side fights like Lucas Lee vs the Paparazzi which really doesn't feel like a fight and more like the animation team just trying to show off, and then there's the fight between Ramona and Wallace's stunt doubles which is barely a fight because of the constant cutaways only for it to just lead to a joke. So yeah, there are three real fights in the series. This show is four hours long. The Scott Pilgrim movie is half as long as this and has seven amazingly choreographed fights. I like the emotional side to the Scott Pilgrim universe, but there being only two good fights in this entire series is unacceptable and is one of the reasons why this show is infuriating. This isn't helped by the really underwhelming music. A big part of the Scott Pilgrim universe is the music accompanying it, and while there are some memorable ones like United States of Whatever and Police Truck, that's about it. Two standout licensed songs and not a single outstanding original song by Anna Managuchi, who made the amazing soundtrack for the Scott Pilgrim video game. Which is really rough, and even though it's not that big of a deal to me, it's still a negative and just another example of how this show fails to grasp one of the reasons people love the movie so much. Scott Pilgrim Takes Off is if you took the concept of subversion and made it into a show, which ironically is a very Scott Pilgrim thing to do since a lot of the franchise is built upon subverting expectations. But the problem with how subversive this show is is that it was marketed and was shaping up to be the definitive retelling of the Scott Pilgrim story that the fanbase has been waiting 13 years for. In the heat of the moment, the idea of Scott Pilgrim dying in the first episode is funny, at the viewer's expense, and at first you play along with it, but then once the joke is no longer funny and keeps going for longer than you were comfortable with, and has finally come to an end, in retrospect it makes the viewer feel worse than I think the show meant to. And that's my experience with the show as a Scott Pilgrim fan. As a reviewer, it's a slightly above average product with great animation, creativity, and some standout moments that were hindered by trying to do way too much in the 8 episodes it was given, resulting in it abandoning any identity the show had built up every 2-3 episodes, leaving us with a product that is a fun, inconsistent mess of a show. But as a Scott Pilgrim fan, I was smiling ear to ear throughout the entire series because I was getting to see some of my favorite characters return after over a decade. But once the credits rolled and I took in what I just watched, I grew more and more unsatisfied as I thought about the series and that disappointment turned to anger. Not necessarily because it didn't meet my expectations, but after over a decade of the fanbase getting nearly nothing, only for Scott Pilgrim's big return to be an elaborately marketed troll, it just hurts. Scott Pilgrim Takes Off is exactly what we wanted it to be when it wants to be. The emotional nostalgia I felt throughout episode 1 was magical, and one of the biggest undertones of Scott Pilgrim is recognized perfectly in episodes 3 and 4. But that's just a thing. This show doesn't want to be what we expected. It wanted to surprise, it wanted to innovate, it wanted to do anything it could to stay away from being predictable or stale. But in trying so hard to run away from its past iterations, it forgot large parts of what made the series great to begin with. The development between Scott and Ramona, the over-the-top and unique fight scenes, the impressive ability to always be surprising without trying too hard. This show fails at capturing those qualities because it tries too hard to be different and bury the past. Which as any Scott Pilgrim fan would know, is pure irony. Hi. Sticking at your DIY 